What is the Surface Pro 3? For some, it's just another device. For Microsoft, it's a tablet to truly replace your laptop. My name's Aaron and you're watching Tech at a Glance. For two generations, Microsoft's vision for its Surface Pro lineup has been to combine the portability of a tablet and the power of a modern laptop into one converging device. The Surface Pro 3 is the third iteration and represents a deep refinement of what Microsoft has learned over the years. At less than a centimeter thick and just under two pounds, it's pretty comparable to most tablets on the market. The magnesium casing, which Microsoft calls Vapor Mag, gives the Pro 3 a nice cool to the touch feeling. If anything, the entire unit feels very durable and well-engineered. The touchscreen, which measures 12 inches and has a resolution of 2160 by 1440, gives the Surface Pro 3 about 50% more pixels than a common 1080p display. If you notice, this is also a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. Microsoft says the more squared screen is supposed to emulate looking at a notebook or a sheet of paper, and really, it makes a big difference. This surface actually feels correct in portrait mode, and not like a 2x4 made of metal and glass. However, this also means more letterboxing, or black bars when watching movies or videos, but really, it's not noticeable when you've got deep black levels and excellent viewing angles on the screen. But the best part of the Surface Pro 3 is definitely what's inside. This isn't an iPad or a Galaxy tablet. Powering the Surface Pro 3 is either an Intel Core i3, i5, or i7 processor running a full version of Windows 8.1 Pro. It's accompanied by 4 or 8 gigs of RAM and anywhere between 64 to 512 gigs of high-speed solid-state storage. The notebook architecture means the Surface Pro 3 can run pretty much any program you would find on a standard desktop or a laptop, so although Windows 8.1 has its own touch-optimized app store, there's nothing stopping you from running a full desktop version of Excel, Adobe Lightroom, browser plugins, or even games. With Windows, you also get universal peripheral support and a proper file system. Pop open the kickstand, which is now adjustable to about 150 degrees. Attach the optional but probably necessary $130 type cover keyboard, and you end up with a device that has the full functionality of a laptop, but the portability of a tablet. A lot of people say that because of this kickstand system, we lose a lot of the lapability versus laptops where the screen is usually held up by a hinge. If you really think about it though, most coffee shops or libraries already have tables, and you probably shouldn't be writing an essay without a table anyways, even with a laptop. But in cases without one, like on a train or at the park, the adjustable kickstand really does a good job to stabilize the surface on your lap. In our opinion, Lapability isn't really important when you can easily remove the keyboard from the surface completely. There's really something to be said about being able to fill out an entire spreadsheet or slide presentation, detach the keyboard, and comfortably sit back to watch a movie without actually switching devices. Then there are things we completely take for granted on a computer that really go missing on tablets like external monitor support or a full-size USB 3 port for thumb drives and peripherals. What distinguishes the Surface Pro 3 from a lot of the other tablets or convertibles on the market is the included pen. Sure, it doesn't have all the buttons or the thousand sensitivity levels of artist pens, but the implementation by Entrig isn't that bad. It still enables about 256 levels of pressure and gives excellent touch responsiveness, especially at the edges of the screen. It's miles ahead of the capacitive styluses you'd buy for iPads, for example. My handwriting on the Surface actually looks like my handwriting on a sheet of paper. I just wish there was somewhere to store the pen other than the loop that you stick onto the type cover. Battery life for us has been pretty good. Microsoft tells about 9 hours, we get 7 or 8, and that's with pretty heavy web browsing, watching Netflix, and doing word processing at medium to medium low brightness. So when it all comes together, who is the Surface Pro 3 really for? If you're the casual user whose main computer use is browsing the web, streaming videos, or doing web or Excel processing, the Surface Pro 3 is more than powerful enough to replace a laptop while being light and portable enough to really replace a tablet. But while in theory this would be perfect, for the money, it becomes the question of how much you're willing to pay for convergence. The cheapest i3 configuration only comes with 64 gigs of storage, and with the more capable i5 or i7 configurations costing more than $1,000 with a type cover, 
it may be better to stick with a decent cheaper laptop, especially for those who wouldn't really use the pen. Where the Surface Pro 3 really shines is for students or business users. Being able to carry around a full Windows-based computer in a truly portable tablet form factor is a dream, especially when combined with the versatility of a seamless keyboard attachment. Native compatibility for Outlook, Visual Studio for programmers, remote desktop, virtual machines, Adobe Lightroom, and a myriad of important business programs you won't really find on iOS or Android means the portability comes with very little compromise. But the biggest selling point is probably the pen. There's nothing quite like freely annotating lecture slides or drawing diagrams without a cumbersome touchpad. Try typing out a math equation onto a PDF and you'll know what I mean. Then being able to go home, connect an external mouse, keyboard, printers, and monitors to the surface and seamlessly accessing all of your files completely solves the need for multiple work devices and shows off Microsoft's vision for a true tablet laptop convergence. So for the student, programmer, or business user, Microsoft has carved out a truly complete product with the Surface Pro 3, one that's pretty difficult to substitute.